Welcome to our uh, deep dive into the world of Korean AI. So imagine AI, right? Imagine AI that understands and speaks Korean just as fluently as any human. That's the goal. That's what experts in Korea are working towards. That's right. And we're diving into coverage of a recent seminar in Seoul all about this. It was called the 2025 Korean Foundation Model Consensus Seminar. It was held at the KBS Business Video Center. Wow. And it's all about developing these large language models specifically for the Korean language. You know, think of it kind of like the Korean equivalent of ChatGPT. Yeah. But it's not just about the tech. It's about national pride and AI sovereignty. Korea is really trying to find its place on this global AI stage. Absolutely. And what's so interesting here is that it's not just about, you know, translating existing AI. This is about building these models from the ground up, models that can truly understand all those Korean nuances. So let's talk about AI sovereignty for a minute. Right. Why is it so important for Korea to have its own powerful AI? I mean, why not just rely on the models built by these global tech giants? Mm -hmm. Why go through all this trouble? Well, think about it this way. If a country relies solely on AI that was developed somewhere else, they're essentially giving up control, right? Control over key aspects of their economy, mm -hmm. their culture, even their security. Yeah. Imagine if Korea relied only on US developed AI for things like financial algorithms. Mm -hmm. Well, this could actually disadvantage Korean markets because these algorithms might be biased, Yeah. you know, biased towards Western economic models. That's a good point. It's like handing over the keys to your digital kingdom to somebody else. Yeah, exactly. So walk us through what's happening in Korea. What did you learn from the seminar? What are they doing about this? Well, this seminar brought together some of Korea's, you know, top AI minds, and they discussed the challenges and the opportunities of all of this. And one of the biggest obstacles they highlighted was resources. Korea feels like they're playing catch up. Mm. You know, when it comes to having enough AI experts, the computing power, mm. to train these massive models, and even just having enough raw data in Korean, you know, the data that these models need to actually learn from. So the article I shared also mentioned government regulation as a potential roadblock. I mean, you would think the government would be all in on supporting this. Right. Well, it is a bit ironic. Some of the rules that are actually designed to protect Korea's data privacy and cybersecurity, they're what? actually hindering AI progress. So, for example, strict regulations on data sharing, those make it hard for researchers to access large data sets, yeah. which are essential for training these models. So it's like they're trying to be responsible with data, but it's unintentionally holding them back. Exactly. It's a tough balancing act. It is. And then you have this other issue of what experts call the Kolmogorov complexity problem. OK, I have to admit that one sounds a little intimidating. Can you break that down for us? Yeah. So mm. think of it like this. Korean grammar. It's complex. Uh -huh. And researchers are trying to figure out the most efficient way for AI to understand all of those rules right. and to use them correctly without being bogged down by unnecessary information. So they're not just trying to teach AI to speak Korean. They're trying to teach it to speak Korean in like the most optimized, efficient way possible. Exactly. Wow. And that requires a really deep understanding of linguistics and computer science. So it sounds like they're really pushing the boundaries here of what's possible with AI. But even with all these obstacles, it sounds like the seminar wasn't all doom and gloom. Did they highlight any creative solutions? What's the good news? Oh, there was definitely a sense of optimism in the room. One idea that really generated a lot of buzz was this concept of open labs, which would be collaborative research hubs, where the you know best and brightest in Korean AI could come together, share knowledge, and work on projects together. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, collaboration seems essential when you're tackling a challenge this complex. Absolutely. So did any other solutions come up besides these open labs? Well, another intriguing idea was learning from China's experience. One expert specifically pointed to the success of China's DeepSeek AI chatbot as inspiration. Hmm. Interesting. So some experts are saying DeepSeek is a good model for Korea to follow. But is that really a fair comparison? Their development paths seem pretty different, don't you think? That's a good point. While DeepSeek is an impressive example of a successful language model, you know, China and Korea do have different strengths and weaknesses when it comes to AI development. China invested heavily in AI research and development early on, and they made it a priority to build their own domestic AI capabilities. Mm -hmm. They also focused on creating these large, high-quality data sets in Chinese, which is absolutely crucial for training their models effectively. So it's not just about the algorithms themselves. It's about having the right data to feed those algorithms. Exactly. 
Hmm. That brings up an important question. Can a country like Korea really build AI to rival these tech giants like Google and Microsoft? I mean, those companies have almost limitless resources. Right. You're absolutely right. It's a David versus Goliath situation. And you mentioned Korea's strengths, but honestly, can they really catch up to Google's resources? I mean, isn't this a bit overly ambitious? It is a formidable challenge. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But Korea does have some unique advantages. Okay. They have a highly tech-savvy population, very robust digital infrastructure. They also have strong research institutions and a government that's clearly committed to supporting AI development. And perhaps most importantly, the Korean language itself presents these unique challenges and opportunities. So they're turning a potential weakness into a strength. Tell me more about how the Korean language itself plays into all of this. Well, if Korean researchers can crack the coal of Korean language AI, they'll be developing expertise that could be extremely valuable on the global stage. And that's really what this seminar was all about. It was about building consensus and momentum for this national effort to push Korean AI forward. So it was like a rallying cry for the Korean AI community. Yeah, exactly. What happens now? What were the specific next steps? Well, they emphasize the need for, you know, continued investment in research and development, mm. especially in things like natural language processing and machine learning. Mm. They also called for the creation of more specialized training programs, you know, to cultivate the next generation of Korean AI experts. So they need the talent to drive this kind of innovation. Exactly. What about the data challenges we talked about? Any solutions for that? Yeah, they proposed creating a national Korean language data repository. Think of it like a massive collection of text and speech data that researchers could access to train their AI models. Mm -hmm. They also discussed ways to incentivize companies to share their data responsibly while still, of course, protecting privacy. So it sounds like they're taking a multi-pronged approach to addressing this data challenge. They are. And they also highlighted the need for better evaluation methods. Right now, it's actually difficult to objectively measure how well these Korean AI models are performing. So they called for the development of standardized benchmarks and testing protocols specifically for the Korean language. That's interesting. So it's not just about building the AI. It's about having the tools to accurately assess its capabilities. I'm curious, did they discuss any specific applications for this Korean AI? Like where could we actually see this being used? Oh, yeah. They explored some very exciting possibilities. One area that generated a lot of excitement was personalized education. Imagine AI tutors that could adapt to each student's learning style and provide customized instruction in Korean. That's fascinating. So what other applications were they looking at? They also talked about AI-powered virtual assistants that could communicate with patients in Korean, answer their questions, and even help with diagnoses. Hmm. Those applications sound pretty promising, though I wonder if there are potential downsides to consider as well. That's a valid point. You know, it's always important to consider the potential impact of any new technology. Sure. So what else? Another area they discussed was cultural preservation. Imagine using AI to translate and preserve ancient Korean texts. Wow. Or even to create interactive experiences that bring Korean history and culture to life. It's like using technology to keep traditions alive and accessible. Absolutely. Hmm. I imagine that could have a huge impact on cultural awareness and understanding. Oh, absolutely. And there are obvious economic implications as well. If Korea can become a leader in Korean language AI, that could create new industries, attract investment, and really boost their global competitiveness. It's amazing to think about the ripple effects that something like you know, teaching AI to speak Korean could have. Mm -hmm. So Korea is exploring all these innovative solutions, but can they really build AI that can rival the tech giants? I mean, that's a big question, right? You're right to raise that point. It is a formidable challenge. But I think it speaks to a broader trend we're seeing globally, a shift away from AI dominance by a handful of large, mostly Western companies and towards a more multipolar AI landscape. So more diversity in who's developing and controlling AI. Exactly. That sounds like a good thing. It could be. Countries like Korea, China, and others are realizing that AI is not just a technological tool, it's a strategic asset. It's about having a say in how this technology is developed, deployed, and governed. So it's almost like a form of technological independence. Precisely. And as more countries invest in their own AI capabilities, it could lead to a more balanced and competitive global AI ecosystem. That makes sense. 
What are the cultural implications of this? You mentioned earlier the potential for AI to preserve Korean traditions. Could it also lead to a resurgence of interest in Korean language and culture globally? It's certainly a possibility. Mm -hmm. Imagine a world where anyone can easily access and enjoy Korean literature, film, music, all thanks to AI-powered translation and personalization tools that can have a profound impact on how Korean culture is perceived and consumed around the world. It's like breaking down language barriers and opening up a whole new world of cultural exchange. Exactly. That's really exciting. It is. And of course, there are geopolitical implications as well. As AI becomes increasingly intertwined with national security and economic competitiveness, the countries that control this technology will have a significant advantage. So it sounds like it's about more than just having the best algorithms. It's about having the best AI talent, data, and infrastructure. Exactly. And that's why the seminar in Korea is so significant. It represents a conscious effort to position Korea as a major player in the global AI race. It's a fascinating story, and I have a feeling this is just the beginning. I agree. This seminar was about building consensus and momentum. The real work is just starting. Well said. This has been an incredible deep dive into the world of Korean AI. It's been my pleasure to join you. Before we go, I want to leave you with something to think about. Imagine a world where the most advanced AI for healthcare is developed in Korea. Hmm. Would we see a shift in global medical research and innovation? That's something to ponder. It certainly is. Thanks again for joining me on this deep dive. Until next time. Personalized education through AI. That sounds pretty revolutionary. What other applications were they looking at? Well, they also talked about these AI-powered virtual assistants, you know? The kind that could communicate with patients in Korean, answer their questions, even help with diagnoses. Hmm. Yeah, those applications sound promising. Though I do wonder if there are, you know, potential downsides to consider as well. That's a valid point. It's always important to consider the potential impact of any new technology, good or bad. Right. Another area they discussed was cultural preservation. Okay. Imagine using AI to translate and preserve ancient Korean texts or to create these interactive experiences that really bring Korean history and culture to life. It's like using technology to keep traditions alive and accessible. Yeah, exactly. I imagine that could have a huge impact on cultural awareness and understanding. Absolutely. And there are some obvious economic implications here, too. Mm -hmm. If Korea can become a leader in Korean language AI, well, that could create new industries, attract investment, and boost their global competitiveness, mm. you know, really make a difference. It's amazing to think about the ripple effects that something like, you know, teaching AI to speak Korean could have. So Korea is exploring all these innovative solutions, but can they really build AI that can rival the tech giants? That's a big question, right? You're right to raise that point. It is a formidable challenge. But I think it speaks to a broader trend we're seeing globally. A shift away from AI dominance by a handful of large, mostly Western companies, and towards a more multipolar AI landscape. So more diversity in who's developing and controlling AI? Exactly. That sounds like a good thing. It could be. You know, countries like Korea, China, and others are realizing that AI is not just a technological tool. It's a strategic asset. It's about having a say in how this technology is developed, deployed, and governed. So it's almost like a form of technological independence. Precisely. And as more countries invest in their own AI capabilities, it could lead to a more balanced and competitive global AI ecosystem. That makes sense. What about the cultural implications of this? You mentioned earlier the potential for AI to preserve Korean traditions. Could it also lead to a resurgence of interest in Korean language and culture globally? It's certainly a possibility. Imagine a world where anyone can easily access and enjoy Korean literature. Film music, all thanks to AI-powered translation and personalization tools. That could have a profound impact on how Korean culture is perceived and consumed. It's like breaking down language barriers and opening up a whole new world of cultural exchange. Exactly. That's really exciting. It is. And of course, there are geopolitical implications as well. As AI becomes increasingly intertwined with national security and economic competitiveness, the countries that control this technology will have a significant advantage. So it sounds like it's about more than just having the best algorithms. It's about having the best AI talent data and infrastructure. Exactly. And that's why this seminar in Korea is so significant. It represents a conscious effort to position Korea as a major player in the global AI race. It's a fascinating story, and I have a feeling this is just the beginning. I agree. This seminar was about building consensus and momentum. The real work is just starting.
Well, this has been an incredibly insightful deep dive into the world of Korean AI. Thank you so much for guiding us through this complex landscape. It's been my pleasure. Before we wrap up, I want to leave our listeners with one final thought to consider. What if in the future we see the rise of not just one or two dominant AI superpowers, but a whole constellation of AI hubs, each with its own unique strengths and specializations? How would that change the way we think about technology culture and global power dynamics? That's a fascinating question to ponder. It certainly is. Thanks again for joining me. And until next time, keep exploring.